The $500 billion AI infrastructure boom has created the most important technology battle of our generation. But who is actually winning the GPU inference war today? This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Today we are going to dive deep into the most comprehensive analysis of AMD versus Nvidia inference performance ever conducted in my humble opinion on YouTube. In this, we are going to examine real-world benchmarks across seven critical dimensions that will determine the future of AI deployment. I am going to compare AMD's MI300X and MI325X accelerators, their flagship data center GPUs with up to 288 GPU of memory against NVIDIA's H100, H200 and the revolutionary new B200 processors that currently dominate the market. And I have done separate videos on each one of them. So if you are interested in any one of them in particular, just search my channel. Through seven detailed comparison tables, we are going to reveal surprising performance disparities, expose why AMD GPUs make AI models slightly maybe uh, non-performant, we are also going to uncover the hidden rental market dynamics because I use one of the renters as you know. So it will be good to cover that too. So let's get right into it. First up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the detailed um, description and specification difference. This comparison, as you can see on your screen, shows AMD's strategy of competing through superior memory capacity and bandwidth. For example, MI325X 288GB HPM capacity significantly exceeds NVIDIA's H200 144GB that provides advantages for large language model deployments. But AMD consistently arrive late to the market as we already know. The MI325X was delayed from quarter 3 2024 to Q2 2025 forcing it to compete against the most advanced NVIDIA B200 rather than its intended target, so they missed the mark. This timing mismatch has severely impacted AMD's competitive positioning as customers often select the newer NVIDIA option over AMD's delayed product, which really makes sense. Now, if you look here, this examines practical workload and it shows nuanced performance characteristics across different use cases. NVIDIA maintains clear leadership in latency sensitive applications like chatbots, real time voice processing and code generation where immediate response times are critical. AMD shows competitive performance in document analysis and batch processing scenarios where its superior memory capacity can be fully utilized. The B200 preview results already indicate it will dominate or it may be very likely dominate across all application categories. That suggests to me that NVIDIA's architectural advantages will continue expanding with each generation and the gap is simply too high, unfortunately. Now look at this. The, cap the capability comparison shows AMD's most critical weakness, the complete absence of multi-node scaling and disaggregated inference support. While Nvidia offer production-ready Dynamo framework enabling distributed pre-filled decode or smart routing and also KV cache offloading, AMD lacks these essential features for modern generative AI deployments. This gap becomes increasingly pro problematic as models grow larger and production deployments require sophisticated orchestration. AMD's limited support for streaming, tool calling, and long context processing further restricts its viability for cutting edge application. Moving forward, the developer ecosystem analysis also shows why AMD struggles with adoption beyond hyperscalers such as AWS, Azure, Oracle Cloud and few others. And I have tested it out on all of them. If you look at AMD's website, it shows that uh, it is improving, but I think Nvidia is still, still brilliant there. 
developers face significantly higher friction when implementing AMD solution. And I think that AMD's community is 10 to 20 times smaller, um, which simply means that they have fewer resources, they are producing very, very less open source content, and there are very, very few third party tooling. Combined with basic, de basic debugging capabilities and high setup complexity, I think AMD deployment requires require substantially more engineering investment. This creates a vicious cycle where limited adoption leads to less community development and that is further widening the gap. Now, if you look here, the total cost of ownership is also quite interesting. It shows a critical market failure destroying AMD's theoretical cost advantage because one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, put forward a published argument, AMD puts that they are way cheaper than NVIDIA. Well, let's have a look at that. Yes, I agree that if you directly purchase AMD for larger deployments, maybe in your cloud or in your data center, AMD definitely is cheaper. But if you go towards the rental market, like I go with mass compute, with only three to five providers offering AMD rental versus 100 plus for NVIDIA. So any provider, you just pick up any, um, you know, GPU cloud provider, you will see almost all of their offerings are on NVIDIA. So this really, I guess, um, makes it very harder to justify you having AMD in your data center. This pricing inversion also means organizations unable to purchase hardware outright from NVIDIA because they are not there is not much demand, so they are producing less. And that is why we really cannot access AMD's cost benefit. And for a home user, it simply doesn't make sense, in my opinion. Now, from the deployment and operational matrices, I think it also shows hidden costs that often override pure performance metrics. AMD's days uh, versus NVIDIA's hours for setup time translate to significant productivity losses during deployment and scaling. The basic monitoring tools and limited cloud provider support also create operational blindness and deployment constraints. Power consumption though is quite good when it comes to AMD and we have to give it to them. But I guess that these factors, as you can see on your screen, explain why enterprises, hyperscalers overwhelm overwhelmingly select NVIDIA despite AMD's theoretical advantage in terms of cost. Now, this one is my favorite. This shows and highlights AMD's fundamental resource allocation problem. Look, despite spending $749 million US dollars quarterly on stock buybacks, AMD maintains only a $13 million internal cluster for R&D. That's it. It is a shocking underinvestment that also perpetuates their software quality issues. NVIDIA's 100 times larger computational resources enable rapid innovation, comprehensive testing, and feature development that AMD simply cannot match. This disparity, combined with consistent production delays and limited enterprise penetration, suggests AMD's competitive position may actually has worsened as AI workloads become more sophisticated and software dependent. So in my opinion, um, look, if you are looking to buy something and are wondering whether you should go for AMD or NVIDIA, based on you know my own analysis, searches, and research, NVIDIA remains a superior choice for virtually not only for organization, for deploying any kind of AI workload, but also for the home users. While AMD's hardware specification appear competitive on paper, the ecosystem realities paint a starkly different picture. Now, when you should consider AMD? Well, you should only consider AMD if you are, uh, you know, operating at the scale of maybe AWS or Oracle Cloud, and if you need to purchase thousands of GPUs directly. Also, if you want to run specific large model batch workloads with high latency tolerance, and you already have software figured out, and you are 
you know, very much willing to embrace the feature limitation. So I believe that at the moment NVIDIA stands, you know, I don't think so AMD stands a chance at we speak now. You know, down the road, no one knows because AI is changing very rapidly. Maybe AMD would do a complete overhaul and in six months time, we will be talking, you know, in reverse. So you never know in this field. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me also introduce you to Matrix who are sponsoring the video. Metric lets you create a realistic world simulator where you can run repeated simulations as A-B tests for your marketing captions, allowing marketers to test different angles and strategies. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please do me a favor, like the video, share it and subscribe. Thank you.